And now I have the pleasure of introducing um, Celine LeMay from um, Quebec, Canada. And Celine has been a midwife for over 30 years in Quebec. She was actively engaged for legalization of midwifery practice. She's the past president of the Quebec Midwives Association and is a member of the board of the Order des Sages-Femmes du Québec. She has a baccalaureate in nursing, an MA in anthropology, and a doctorate in applied human sciences from the Université de Montréal. She's teaching as a senior le lecturer in the Bac en pratique de sage-femme for 10 years at the Université de Québec à Trois-Rivières in Quebec. She has three children, um, three grandchildren. Please excuse my French accent. And I'm going to turn it over to Celine as she talks with us about sharing storage, constructing knowledge, language, and meanings. So hello, everybody. I hope you uh, hear me well and not uh, talking too loud. Um, thank you for inviting me to be there and share with you some of thoughts I have. And uh, happy Midwife's Day for everybody. And um, so this, uh, this presentation uh, began with my doctoral research findings. Uh, it was about you know, midwifery practice before its legalization in Quebec, Canada, in 1999. So it was about midwives who were practicing outside the legal and institution, and mostly home births. So one of the themes of my uh, my thesis was uh, learning and un understanding together. So and it was about sharing stories. The midwives were meeting uh, each week together and sharing stories about the birth they were immersed in. So and and they were discussing a lot of things, and the fact is that after the legalization, there was um, you know institutionalization and bureaucratization of practice, and now it's more um, management values oriented. So it, we are talking about efficiency, the management of time, and. When the midwives are uh, meeting now, uh, they they have more standards, narrative rules. Like they have, you know, not they have to, but they used to um, use the biomedical language. Uh, birds is about description of the bird. You know, it's like a report: what happened, when, and it's more a ritualization of bird stories. And often it's focusing on uh, transfers and complications. So because they don't have time to share the normal stories, you know, what do we say about? Well, it was normal. Everything went fine. So there's nothing much to say about that. So and the authorities now are questioning even the need for team meetings if, uh, each week because it's for them. It's like. What is the big deal about uh, you know doing those meetings? It's like losing time. So what is the context now from the 80s to uh, now? It's the authoritative knowledge is very biomedical. We have in, we are in an era of science, you know, which the values of neutrality, objectivity, uh, what counts is facts, numbers. Uh, there, it's the instrumental reason. It's still very much the you know body mind duality, and from the research, you know, it's like knowledge from nowhere. You know, it's so objective that uh, this it's not situated. We are still at the using the biomedical paradigm. So it's the dominance of biology and technology and pathology oriented and result oriented. So, and we are also in the area of scientism, which means that the scientific knowledge is bringing like the truth, and it's really the only real knowledge. And with the evidence-based paradigm, it's more and more like that. 
So what is the problem? Uh, the biomedical language uh, continuously carrying the b medical metaphors about the woman's bodies. You know, it's like a machine. It's still very strong. And the, it's the continuous background music of fear because we're talking about the good case, you know, which has complications and uh, uh, many horror stories. And it's a silencing, a traditional and honored way of woman ways of knowing, which is telling stories. We don't have time to tell stories like anecdote. So where's the specificity of midwifery? You know, what, what is different? Are we a kind of nurse or a kind of doctor? Uh, I want to remind you that in Quebec, uh, the midwives were uh, legalized as a profession distinct from medicine and from nursing. So it's a quest to find what is, what is special for us and with stories. It can it can uh, do something about that. What is sh sharing stories? You know, it's sharing a lived experience, and it's different from the description of facts and measures and results. Is really an embodied and experiential knowledge, because a story is about a unique event and situation. And there's two meanings of the word situation. It can be a material meaning, which is objectivity. You know, it's a case. Uh, it's a biomedical knowledge. You, you have the numbers and the facts. Everything is measured. But it can have another meaning, which is ex existential meaning. So a situation is a moment in the unfolding of an existence. You know, we're talking about the subjectivity and singularity. We're talking about the multiplicity of knowledge and the evidence of persons, not of numbers. So a story is considered as a whole. Usually, we have the normal and the pathological in the way we're working, but we forget about the existential. And sharing stories can help us to go through that. So why sharing stories? First, you know, it's acknowledging a human impulse to tell tales. Uh, it's for a lot of different society and cultures. It's oral traditions, you know, it's, it's not written. So what people know is from stories and legend and all that myths. And uh, traditionally, for midwives, the knowledge were transmitted orally. So it's historical, traditional way uh, for us to, to, to know things, but to transmit. And it's a valued way of knowing. And sharing stories, it's, it brings an integrative knowledge. Because in a story, you have emotion. You, you can have clinical reasoning, you can know about mechanism and a sp spirituality. So it's many things together. Sharing stories, having access to multi levels of reality, and in a way, it's learning about complexity. We have a tendency to see the childbirth as in a mechanism, which we want to facilitate, but it's still in a mechanic way of thinking. So in sharing stories, having access to profound knowing, and so in going beyond the mind. And it can be access to a new knowledge. And sharing stories have an epistemological value, and it's considered like that for with philosophers and in sociology and in anthropology. And we're using language when we tell a story that value connectedness in one event. So in the medical uh, terminology, when you use that, we reinforce the, techno the technical rationality. So why sharing stories? The, the stories can tell us about the process versus the results, which are all uh, statistic and the numbers we use in obstetric, uh, it's about the results. And we know that 
uh, with midwives, the, the process is as important as the results. So, and it's also exploring the values implicit in the story. And it's about, you know, it's a hermeneutic process. When we share a story, tell a story, we also create meanings. We are able to name the values. And sometimes and often it can have a therapeutic aspect of narratives. It can be beneficial for the storyteller, sometimes cathartic. And, um, and it's um, about mind and art opening. You know? And for the one who are listening, you know, we can develop an ethics of listening, how we listen, just with the ears or with the, the mind, the heart, the, the soul. So why sharing stories? It has the potential to develop a reflective practice, you know, having discussion, having reflection of a, a lot of things. And uh, it's uh, really not easy when we work in a very institutional um, uh, context to have time and take time to develop a reflective practice. Stories can be informative, they can be formative, and sometimes they can be transformative. We all know some stories and we lived things that, you know, transform ourselves, mind blower. And, and then in, in each story, it can have the potential to find big things in small details. It's the treasure of understanding and consciousness raising. So, um, in sharing stories, we can find what are the gifts in the story. I will tell you about the story are not just the good stories. It's all about all birth, everywhere, with every, anybody, you know. So, we can learn how to find what is the story within the story. And in a way, it's, you know, a, f a way of acknowledging the, the invisible of the reality, which is not the paradigm of the biomedical uh, culture. So why sharing stories? You know, it's learning and having, bringing new knowledge about different things like life, death, love, mothering, ourselves, birth, the body, the newborn, father, the art of presence, midwifery as an art, compassion, confidence, intuition, transformation, sacredness, vigilance, etc. We all can add something <laughs> on that list. So why sharing stories? It's all also to honor the dignity of power and powers of women. You know, birth is something that women can do. And physiologically speaking, we forget that the woman is not giving birth because we're there. We are there because she's giving birth. You know, we forget that. So, and it, it uh, gives the value of a share, live experience. So it's not about me uh, that lived that, but sharing that, uh, um, you know, create a kind of share, uh, a sh shared live experience. So it can have an affirmation that childbirth without, without numbers is possible. Yay! <laughs> what are the issues about that? You know, we can... Um, we can, uh, uh, having a sense, a different concept of time, you know, the clock time versus the process time. We uh, knew about the Keros time. So when we tell stories, we can develop a sense, different sense of the, uh, uh, about time. And it's, uh, we can use different language. And Lavelle, it's an author who says the creation of language is like the creation of the world. So we have not just uh, 
the words, but the way we uh, we tell things is telling things about about birth and about midwifery too, and it va it values the uh, different ways of knowing, and it values thing that learning from each other and learning from women. They are the one we you know we can learn from. And the issue is knowing and understanding the normality, the variety, and the concept of unique normality too. So, and it's putting childbirth in a complexity vision versus, you know, mechanistic vision. So we have time to add details and telling about the context. So we can, the, one of the issues is the distinction between technical care which needs this distanciation versus relational care. You know, um, we're used to uh, learn that being a good professional uh, is being kind of distance, you know, creating from the, the patient. But this uh, objectification of the patient is a risk of alienation for the patient and for the carer. You know, one of the author and the philosophy said that objectification, you know, taking the woman as an object of care, is um, a way as a kind of violence. You know, and this, this was strong, but is I think it's true. So the woman is not an object of care. She is situation. She has a name, and and she can do, you know, what the, so we are talking uh, about, the, you know, the powers of stories, but um, we can have stories of power, and I want to distinct here that it's not the power over, it's the power from within, which is not the same at all. So one of the issue is also creating a sense of wisdom, you know, because sash farm. I am a sash farm, which is a wise woman, and is a, it's I'm privileged to have the wisdom in my professional identity. So and because talking about birth is also talking about life. You know, and when we consider the dance of childbirth, is our relation with uncertainty, and it's a result. And it's it's um, weaving the things, and there's a place for the unknown there, and a place for the possibilities and miracles, and a lot of different things. And we can, as a teacher, uh, consider. Uh, the narrative competencies in formation for midwives because it can be really an ed educational strategy for students learning to tell stories. In a way, when we tell stories, it, it creates also a resistance to the reductionism in healthcare. So it's the richness of childbirth. We have to uh, uh, speak for that. So sharing, sharing stories is not just about physiological birth or home birth or water birth. It's about sharing all about birth. The miracle, the tragic, the joy, suffering, sorrows. It can be anywhere. And it, a difficult birth has a lot of things to, uh, to um, teach us, as well as a miracle birth. So, and sharing stories is a commitment to learn and understanding and make, making meaning and going beyond fa uh, facts. There's a uh, Buddhist nun, uh, Pema Children, I don't know if I pronounce this well, See, she said, <laughs> when you are real, ready to listen and to learn, even the stones speak. So it's a commitment just to stay open in our mind and and heart and really um, ready to to learn. So and sharing stories can honor the importance of questioning and reflection. There's a lot of potential in sharing stories. It is a potential for salutogenic perspective on birth 
versus seeing birth as a problem. You know, what can, uh, you know, some women are courageous, resilient, and we, sometimes we thought that it will never end, it will go with C-section or whatever the result, and finally she made it, and you know, so there's something uh, as a potential there for the woman. And sharing stories is always, is also a potential of putting weight on normality and resisting to the weight of horror stories. They can last for uh, many years, some very difficult or tragic things, but then we have to, um, I think it's an occasion to share different levels um, uh, as, you know, the difficulties, but also the miracle. Um, there's an emancipatory potential for midwives because it values the, the clinical reasoning versus just applying protocols. So, and it's an occasion to create a midwifery language, you know, to talk about the things that are invisible, the spirit, spirituality, and the energy, and all that, which is not really recognize in obstetric. And it can have the fundamental contribution to the midwifery paradigm. Is there a midwife's gaze? What is our unique or special way to uh, do we, can we see the glass half full and not always half empty, you know? Um, and the sharing stories has the potential of creating and strengthening our professional identity and culture and genera generated by shared stories in which beliefs, identities, values, and relationships are linked to the narrative. So I want to share with you one of the past president of the SOGC in Canada that said, uh, one day, you know, restore the wonder. Bird is so precious. So it's not just about facts. We are privileged to be part of a childbirth and birth of babies on mothers and families. So uh, we should honor that and acknowledge that. <laughs> and the uh, the, this author said that universe is made of stories and not atoms. And this is what I had to, um, to share, I wanted to share with you. So thank you, merci beaucoup. So um, it's up to you to share a story <laughs> or asking some questions. Yes, I think it would be wonderful if someone would like to share a, a story, short story. Um, and I'll keep an eye on the window in case you need the microphone. Perhaps rather than stories, uh, does anyone have any questions? Perhaps how maybe questions about how to incorporate more narrative? Oh, there we go. Good one, Anna. I'll turn it over to you. Celine, maybe? Yes. Uh, I, I think that, you know, we have in French in Quebec a book of, of, about all different birds. But you know what? I was thinking about that. And um, I read recently a book 
uh, it, it's in English, and the title is Transform by Postpartum Depression. And there are stories of those women who, you know, they didn't expect that at all, was not at risk, but they had a bad postpartum depression. And they, they are talking about their story and finding finally how, because of that, they were transformed. So it's not about just the good and the miracle and the, the, the powerful, and it's important. But um, uh, everything can be part of learning about life and love, even a story with, uh, which is difficult. It's not about the facts. It's about what we learn about that and what makes us different in our relation to the world. Celine, can you hear me? Absolutely. This is Cecilia Jevett from the United States. I teach in a midwifery program where I'm reviewing the evaluations of our midwifery faculty members. And many times over the last few years, the students have said in their evaluations to us, we don't want to hear your old stories. We don't want to hear your old cases. We want the evidence. Just tell us the evidence. Have you ever heard that from midwives who are learning? Yes, absolutely, especially with our era of evidence. And this is scientism. You know, it's so. Um, so strong that is the real uh, knowledge we have to know. Uh, it's about scientific facts. And, you know, I don't know how to, um, it's not all stories, but what about, uh, you know, let's say in our university, when the, the students are coming for the first time in birthing centers, and in Quebec, you know, 90% of the midwifery practice is outside hospital. It's in birthing centers and at home. The hospital is not um, something that women want, you know, with midwives for now. But one of the first um, uh, things that they have to do when they go in a clinical practice, um, at the first, when they have their first birth, they have to do an homework on that and tell the story, and tell how they felt, and express what they learned from that. So it's a first things to do, but I don't know if there's still, all for all four years during that time, a place to tell not what, what they happened to them, but what they learn from what happened to them. I don't know. It's up to the program to value share the, the storytelling. You have given me an idea. We do have weekly clinical conferences with the students, and I'm going to change my vocabulary a little bit to ask them to tell their stories. Thanks so much, Celine. That's really helpful.
So I, I was interested, Celine, in um, what you were saying about how people do not want to have clinical conferences anymore. Did I understand you correctly that, that uh, people felt they weren't valuable anymore? Right. Right. Well, I, I was just think, I was still thinking that the you know the um, opportunity to have a clinical conference from you know that involves the story of the of the woman herself. Right, her prenatal course, her plans for the birth, um, the family members she's going to have with her, you know, the setting that she's in. It could be uh, construed as a wonderful opportunity for midwives and for doctors also, um, you know, to to think of the narrative of you know the the woman and the birth. Even though you're, in a technical sense, doing a chart review or a um, a clinical conference, so I can see that as being valuable in addition to an education, but also in practice. Okay. Yeah. yeah thank you, Catherine, to talk about the doctors because I was a consultant as a midwife. Uh, two years ago in a small hospital in Quebec and there was this doctor you know was um, uh, telling me uh, that at one point a woman that was not progressing at all and you know he was thinking about having a c-section and then he asked the woman to be you know in different position and try this and finally it, it went well and it was for him like a miracle and I was telling him, you know, you should tell this story to the your colleagues and to the nurses because then everybody can know that when you're changing position, it can make a difference, and the woman, you know, it can, you know, have uh, results. So, and he was happy about that, and take time and, uh, you know, um, uh, make. Uh, an appointment with all the team to um, you know to uh, to tell absolutely I think um, Sherry Sherry has a on.
Absolutely. Well, Susanna in the chat room says that she as a student appreciates the professor's stories. That's good to know. Thank you, Susanna. All right, would um, anyone else like to share their perspective or um, their experiences? Raise your hand if you want me to enable your mic for you so that you can talk. Oh, Tova, let's see, where are we? Tova, Tova, Tova. If she raises her hand, she'll be right at the top. OK. I just enabled your mic. Are you able to talk now? Oops, what happened? OK, so you have a microphone, Tova. Is it green up at the top? Right, we can see that you have the mic. Is it is it white or green? Click on the arrow and connect your microphone. Is it now? Yeah, maybe now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh huh. Ah, you can. Okay. Um, uh, I'm a midwife too, uh, like all, all <laughs> my friends here. Um, uh, I, I think it's it's very for me. It's very important to um, to let the 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 stories emerge uh, uh, in the birth situation. Um, I have uh, just my last birth. I, I I work just now. I work in very little uh, town in in Greenland but it 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 uh, doesn't make any difference because i i've always um been very aware of um letting the stories emerge um i i can tell you uh, an example from uh, the recent birth i've uh, had um I, I, uh, the baby was was posterior, and the, the, uh, we have used a lot of time to try to turn it around and such things. And um, and the, it was a young girl, her first child, and um, she was about ex, uh, eight centimeters. And uh, uh, then she suddenly began to push, and I told her, "This is not possible. You cannot." Uh, you cannot uh, uh, give birth like this. It's nobody can do that. Then she just <laughs> went on pushing, and 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 uh, suddenly I saw it. it the baby was uh, about uh, about to to be, to come. I, I could see uh, some of a uh, little bit hair, and then I I just t told her, now you are doing, now you are about to do what is what is impossible to do uh, and uh, she was really really proud she gave birth and it, it was wonderful but um, I think it's it's so important for uh, in in any uh, birth situation that you 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 um, uh, show uh, you 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 give the um, the the birthing woman and and her and her family the the chance to to see the stories in 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 the in the uh, situation and now she's uh, so proud uh, and she knows as she's a very really uh, uh, um, 
uh, special person because she did what what's not possible to do, and all the family they are proud of her. I think it's it's really an mm, example of uh, um, the art of mid midwifery, uh, which is not the uh, um, which we 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 not talk talk so much about, uh, never talk about. Hmm? That was just what I would say. Now that's that's a very valuable reminder. Hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's really a a, a possibility for us uh, to empowering uh, the women we we uh, we work with, not to tell them what to be proud of, but to let them understand it uh, uh, in the situation, let them see it themselves. Not, yes, but but if, yeah, yes, mm, yes. <laughs> that was my story. I'm going to turn off your mic now. Anyone else? As we've we've got a couple more minutes before we have to wrap up the session and give the room over to the next um, speaker. So, um, Tove, do you see in the chat room um, you were fading in and out a little bit? Um, and Olga Alishin would like you just to um, summarize the end. Okay, and Gemma. Um, from Australia also points out how important um, storytelling is to midwifery students and even in um, the desire to become a midwife. Um, Or um, Mike is enabled if you want to um, share something with the group. Oh, Mike, uh, Rita, you have to un -mike, un unmute the mic. You ready? Go ahead.
your microphone looks like it's ready. Um, oh, it just got muted. Now it's open. Can you go ahead and, oh, now it's muted again. Can you unmute it and then go ahead and, and see if we can hear you? Okay, Rita is, is typing. Sorry, now just type just type your comment then. Okay, Rita. Well, while while you are typing, it's, yeah, I know it's hard it's hard to tell it and. Um, on the keyboard, but we just want to um, thank Celine very much for sharing her thoughts with us. I mean, it's been, been a very um, engaging session and I'm sure has brought to mind um, a lot of stories for practicing midwives and midwives-to-be. Applause, yes. and. Um, I'm going to turn off the recording at this point and um, 